I first found out about the accounting from articles from these two. Actually, I found out from Jim Bowman, uh, who's a well-known collector uh, uh, in up in your neck of the woods. Up in yeah, the, Lexington, Massachusetts. Lex Lexington. And Jim came down to the Florida State Fiddlers Association and said that they had found out where the uh, banjo came from. It came from this specific group in Africa, and I thought that was very implausible that they could actually find where the banjo came from uh, after all this time. And uh, I was very skeptical. Uh, I ended up uh, getting a grant to go to Africa related to some of my medical work, and one thing led to another, and uh, uh, I had an opportunity to go to Gambia. I had read articles that you two had written in uh, Old Time Herald and also in Banjo Newsletter, and that's how I found out about it. Um, I, I, I have a Jim Bowman connection also, actually. I, was, um, I went into the, um, the Museum of, of Our National Heritage, which is in Lexington, Massachusetts. And Jim Bowman had an installment of many of his uh, uh, banjos, which, which are quite an impressive collection. And I came around this one corner, and there was a video loop playing of a guy playing the accounting. And I had been into the history of the banjo for a long time already, and I actually had a couple of halams, because I thought, yes, halam, I've got them. I had a couple of them. But I came around the corner and I saw this, this guy playing in a conting with this big, giant, round gourd, this stick, these three strings, and he looked like he was playing climber. And my, my jaw just dropped, and I thought, this, this sounds a lot more like the things that I had read about in books by Dina Epstein and and articles and things like that. And so, um, Ulf, who provided that, Ulf Jagforce, who provided that um, video clip, contacted me out of the blue because he was looking for a, um, a gourd banjo for some presentation that he was going to do. And he had seen a website of mine where I had a gourd banjo on there, so he contacted me to see if I could make him a gourd banjo. And um, that's how I got hooked into the accounting thing. And pa Paul, you were the first, were you the first from the U.S. to visit? I believe I was the first American to go to uh, this port, this region of West Africa to study the accounting. Right. Others had been there for other reasons, but right. you're, 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 you're our pioneer. Yeah, I guess so. For this side of the pond, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I had, I had gotten to know about the accounting through going to the Five String Banjo Collectors Gathering, uh, which is, uh, well, I guess it started out as a very small group of collectors, private collectors, that got a lot of early banjos and have discussions about them. And so I had heard about this, and I started going in 2001, and I've been to everyone ever since. And each year, uh, well, the first year I'd heard about, they were talking about this instrument from West Africa, the accounting. And so I was, of course, intrigued by that, in that they could begin to make some type of a connection from the early banjo back to West Africa. And uh, in subsequent years, uh, both Ulf and Daniel had come to the collector's gatherings. And I think I think I'd met Daniel in 2004 for the first time, or 2003 in Long Island. And he started, he gave me a couple of lessons informally at the, at the collector's gathering. And I'd been playing stroke style banjo for a number of years. And so I found that I, I felt connected to the instrument to be able to, to pick it up and play it and so my fixation with the accounting and a lot of other West African pluck loops has grown significantly since. <laughs> and and it, you know uh, we have Sana here and so Sana has kind of the opposite side of the equation. <laughs> um, so I think you should ask Sana how he ended up finding out about the banjo. <laughs> Or the banjo. I think the accounting first, don't you think? Okay, it's, yeah, it's a good yeah, story. Sure. And then the, the banjo stuff is actually kind of interesting too because it ties us all together in a certain way. Well, um, uh, I'm Jola, so the accounting came from the Jola people. So we created this instrument, and this kind of, uh, instrument came from the Jola people for decades. And uh, Paul was asking an interesting question earlier. Because you know the Jola people, they have a uh, different way of speaking. So there's some people that are from Mulomb, I'm from Jambere. So he was asking me exactly uh, which one of those ethnic group just created it, and I said that it would be a very a very tough question to say that maybe the people from Mulomb created this instrument. Because I, one thing I know, my grandparents, you know, 
their grandparents, they've been playing the accounting for years and years. Myself, I just found the accounting when I was nine years old and my granddad. So the accounting basically is very hard to say which one of those ethnic groups uh, created it, but all I can say is that it comes from the Jola people. They are the only people that, you know, have the accounting. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. one of the interesting things about this is from what I've been able to learn and also with these other gentlemen is that um, the Jola, there's only oh, uh, 600, 700,000 Jola, and within the Jola, there's a number of different languages and a number of different kind of subgroups amongst them. The Jola that play the accounting seem to be the Jola Casa, and within the Jola Casa, there's subgroups. Um, and so the numbers of the Jola Casa are only uh, about 50 to 60,000. Yet even there, there's different subpopulations with different uh, dialects and languages. So uh, when Sana says it's hard to tell, well, first of all, when he says there's different ethnic groups, it should be understood that what he's talking about is different ethnic groups within the Jola themselves, and that these groups have a, don't have a perfect time talking to each other because their languages are... They have some words in common, but they actually have a lot of words that aren't. So um, we're still just kind of at the beginning of teasing apart which group, just learning the stories of the different groups and the uh, different... Uh, different groups that are playing the accounting and things like that. Yeah, Paul was saying like uh, when they tune the accounting, they will say, but we don't say that. We say accounting. <laughs> give it the, na the name of the instrument. So, you don't say, my dog is fleas. <laughs> no. no. I'm gonna say, I'm Ray God. I'm just accounting. You know, so that's the that's way. Well, that's the interesting thing about it. I mean, I, I know at least in terms of the European and American people that have gone to the Senegambian region, we know of at least 30 accounting players uh, all the way from Gambia down uh, below the, the Casamance River. And very few of them have we spent a significant amount of time with to really know their own stories and how they've come to know the instrument that, that is in their community. I mean, so there's, well, yeah, uh, as Chuck said, we're very much still at the beginning of understanding the complexities behind the instrument. I do remember being really um, uh, startled uh, when I stayed in, um, in Gambia, the, the, the two times I was there, there was a man there who was um, like a groundskeeper. And um, that was his job. He, you know, he worked full time for the woman to own the house, you know, keeping the grounds and keeping the generator going and that kind of thing. And Antoine. And after, Antoine. Yeah. And after we had been there for a while, it turned out that he was Jola. And we'd been there studying this Jola instrument. So I, of course, said, oh, so you play the accounting? You know, the accounting? he said, well, I did when I was a boy. And I used to play when I was a boy. I learned a lot. And so we gave him an accounting. And he spent a couple of days with it and was able to recall a few of the songs that he had learned as a boy. So I thought that was really cool that it's something that, um, that you, you could learn as a young man. And um, as you get older, maybe you forget about it or you get too busy, you're trying to make a life and stuff like that. And in a way, it's kind of like the banjo. You know, um, even Daniel's story about how he wasn't interested in the banjo as a boy, I mean in the accounting, as a boy. It was after he went to the United States and saw the banjo and made this connection between the American banjo and the accounting, where he became interested in the accounting, he went back to Gambia and approached his father to try to learn. Like all of a sudden it was cool again to, to play the accounting. Again, what you're alluding to, or at least what that reminds me of, is um, as an urban person who learned to play the five-string claw hammer banjo, mostly from other urban people. None of us had the heritage in our families, but we were kind of borrowing from another tradition where uh, the banjo and the fiddle were kind of dying out, or well, had mostly died out. And at least my experience uh, is that when we're in uh, Gambia and Senegal, that it seems like that the tradition the vibrant tradition of the Akanti is receding rapidly, uh, kind of like the banjo that receded from rural, uh, from being in fashion in rural America. And my sense, again, you all might have different opinions, is that the, um, uh, well, when we were 
In Malump, uh, there was a group uh, of villagers that had a boombox, and they were playing kind of modern music that uh, um, was kind of reggae influenced. So just as the banjo kind of was dying in the U.S. and then rediscovered um, and kind of preserved and transformed to another group, I'm not sure if that's going to be the fate of the accounting, but the accounting also seems to have receded from its central role in Joel life. But again, this is just my little take on it. Well, what was really interesting on this last, our most recent trip that Chuck and I had uh, in July of 08 um, was in terms of ideas about transmission of, of, of the accounting and realizing how important the human voice is in the entire equation that that everything stems from the song it stems from the voice and there's a representation of the melodic line on the instrument and so what was really wonderful when we went down to Malump to visit um, people really appeared to be impressed that two two Americans were in their village playing the instrument and a number of the people in the village hadn't played in years and I don't know if um, we had inspired them or they wanted to demonstrate that they too could do this type of, of music but I remember the one evening we were sitting around there drinking uh, palm wine and, and, and passing around the accounting people just kind of taking turns I went and played a tune or two and I handed it to the guy next to me and he said no 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 he, he, meaning that he doesn't play and I said oh come on and of course you know, everybody was just encouraging him so he picked it up and you could hear him singing the line and trying to find that mel melodic line on the instrument. And it was just kind of like that anecdotal experience that uh, really helped to reinforce that. And then the, so in, in terms of it dying out, um, I think it, it, in some aspects, as long as you can remember how to sing the song and you're familiar with at least the playing technique and the tuning, there's a way of reviving it reasonably. Uh, the, the flip side of that is that Remy, uh, one of our main sources, had been trying to start a group, uh, had uh, tried to encourage younger people to take it up, and uh, we asked him about that, and he said, again, I'm paraphrasing someone whose language I don't understand, um, uh, he basically said that it didn't catch on, and so they had stopped, they had stopped that attempt. So again, I think there's both currents of preservation and currents of shedding the uh, tradition. Uh, Sana, what, what's your what's your impressions since you've gotten to see the banjo and, and learn about it? Well, when I saw the banjo first, uh, I'm just like, well, this is this is like counting, you know, because <laughs> they're just very similar, even though the sound is just the same, and uh, that's why I'm so excited. I'm like, I have to get. Uh, a banjo. He has a banjo. He got himself a banjo. I know, I saw that. <laughs> yes! yes. yes. <laughs> I'm going to learn it, you know, because... You know, I think that's the actual way. banjo that I learned on. I think it's the same. Uh, some I think that's the banjo we all learned on. <laughs> yeah. Mike said Delta. <laughs> so we can try to play something together.
轻。<笑><笑>